Um, hello everyone. Um, welcome to my first video of mini series of videos that will be following on how to build a red team cyber range. Um, the reason why I am having this video or this series of videos is that um, in my line of work and especially if you ask anyone who works in a cyber security field we tend to usually build our own lab here and there once a while just to um, for various reasons um, you know do our research try to emulate specific technique that kind of thing right and it helps you to stay up in the game um, and this can be done you know, so many ways. You can do it in-house on your own machine, or you can do it on a cloud infrastructure. Um, whatever it is, whichever works for you, you go with it. Now, for me, I tend to like to build it in-house or on-premise on my own. And over a quite a number of times, I would actually tear down the lab and then rebuild it. Now, what I have over time, what I have noticed or what I've come, up, you know, come about is, and this is coming, becoming very annoying for me, is when I tear down my lab and I try to rebuild it, sometimes I may forget some of the techniques or some of the concepts I used to build a lab, and I would have to refer back to my old notes or go back and then do more research and digging. And sometimes it becomes, you know, time consuming. And, um, and, and someone will say, well, there are tools and scripts that automate some of these things. Yes, those are very good, you know, and it helps out a lot. But my preference is I like to do things manually for most part because it helps me in self-learning and education because um, it gives you the chance to actually appreciate the amount of work that these people who build these tools you know put into building them and secondly it also makes you understand what happens under the hood of those tools um, third in you know you also come to find out some unique things that you may have learned um, you may not have learned if you had used a tool so i like to build these things on my own even though they are time consuming i have this self fulfilling that when I do them um, manually, I really do enjoy. I don't like it though when I have to go back and then back to my notes and stuff. So that is why I'm coming out with this series of video, which I am going to use to document um, how I build my lab so that in the future, if I have to rebuild anything or something similar, I can go back and then review these videos and then see exactly how I did some of the configurations or the setups and secondly I would also want to share with other people you know who may want to you know up up the game on building their lab infrastructure and maybe move from let's say Metasploitable to 3 and maybe some of these boot to root environments and then have something more sophisticated in an active directory sort of nature uh, uh, as you as your lab so that is the intent or those are the intent for for these videos now I have a little bit of some few things that um, I'm, I'm going to use to guide me um, the first is the labs topology it helps you understand what you want to see at the end of everything now I intend to make this lab living material because I'll keep updating it and then keep adding as time you know goes on as new techniques are developed as new attacks come out so it will be something that I'll keep adding once I make changes to the lab um, environment so um, that is that is the intent the second is um, you know if somebody wants to also see the kind of server I'm using to build my lab I would want to provide a snippet of the specs of it. Um, I built this lab, I built this server back in 2013. So some of the specs may be lower than what you would expect in, two, you know, in 2020. But I think this will be a good start if you want something that you want to replicate my environment. 
and then we will also go through how our virtual lab I mean, virtual network will be developed using um, um, you know virtual platform all right and then we'll start off very low key you know just keep it simple when you build these things there's no need for you to just beat yourself up and then have the most strongest things to do or the biggest thing just always start slow and low and then you keep adding stuff so in this case we are going to start with some few domains we will actually start with three domains we'll have the child domain the forest and also the external trusted domain and then at the end I'll have some references things that I, I just want to keep to myself and also share with you some of the people who have done this fantastic job already and I'm just borrowing the ideas and then putting everything together all right so now for the lab topology um, this is how it's going to look like um, so um, we're going to have like I said we're going to have this child domain forest and then trust you know for trusted um, external external trusted forest right now for most part like I said some of the materials or contents you see um, on the internet um, most of them you know when we talk about virtual labs or penetration test lab we normally have them in let's say um, carry to go kind of way where you have let's say your metasploitable or some of these virtual boxes on your laptop and you carry them with you um, i haven't come across you know real materials that demonstrate some of these i have seen i have used a lot of other published in you know, publications and blogs but i haven't seen anything on video format that actually gives a step further on how to actually build a remotable you know, well, that's my word i just coined <laughs> a remotable um, virtual lab where you have a vpn and then you can connect to it and then do your own thing just like you do with platforms such as um, hack the box and all those other ones so i wanted to have this so that people can actually build their own infrastructure let's say maybe on a cloud or on premise and then be able to vpn just like they would do with other cloud um, virtual lab you know virtual platforms all right so this is how the lab you know looks like um, look like in the, um, at the end of the day so my labs my systems specs the machine that I'm running these labs on um, it's just uh, you know eight core processor AMD chip with um, 32 gig of RAM running um, 64 bit of Windows Server 2016 and I'm saving everything on one terabyte of hard disk I actually have three disk um, hard drives on this particular machine but uh, for the purpose of um, looking for like a bigger space to save stuff I have one TB that I will save everything on the virtual lab on it and like I mentioned this is um, on premise so I'm doing everything um, at home you can choose to do it on a cloud and there's nothing wrong with that people have choices and I choose to do this things on premise and um, um, I'm using VMware workstation you can use Hyper-V or any other virtual platforms that you see fit. All right, so that is the specs for the server. Now, the networks that we'll be creating for these labs is going to be three separate ones. Uh, we have the root, we have the child domain, and then we have the forest. And this is how it's going to look like. Now, for these three different schemes of networks, we would have to need in our because they are on a different schemes um, we will need another system or some sort of a virtual gateway or router to be able to um, serve as a glue among these three subnets to allow the flow of information among or between them right so that is actually going to be our first device we'll create in our next video is going to be our gateway we will create that is going to serve as a router or as a gateway among these three subnets so that we can set up communication among um, the child the forest and then the external trusted domain all right um, so we'll stop the first video here 
and continue the next video we'll start we will start the next video from this place creating our first device which is going to be our gateway um, if you haven't done already i would encourage you to subscribe to the channel and also set up an alarm so that you know each time that i drop a new video you will be first to be notified so you can follow along um, your feedback your comments your recommendations your suggestions are all welcome again this is how i do my things and that i'm sharing with you there is no right or wrong so if i don't do it how you know it's being done it doesn't mean what i'm doing is wrong or what you're doing is wrong it's just that i'm doing something in a different way that maybe you can pick one or two from um, thank you so much for your time and um, i'll see you on the other side of the videos bye bye